Hello, Internet. My name is Ace, and today we are going to back to the 80s. Okay, so this is the decade in which I was born, and the decade in which Mickey kind of um, got a bit slow down here on the pen, but shouldn't uh, hamper us too much. Mickey kind of made a bit of a comeback. So, as you can tell, we've been doing Mickey, Mickey Mouse throughout the decades, how to draw Mickey from the different, um, like I said, decades. And I've just been mindlessly doing the circle like a maniac whilst I've been talking, but it'll do. Um, okay, so Mickey always starts with a circle. And for throughout the 50s, 60s, 70s, 60s and 70s particularly, there was literally, um, well not literally, but there was hardly anything that Mickey, Mickey was in. Mickey was in like nothing at all. So... We've got, we start with a circle, like so. Then, what we need to do is we need to find the center line. So, this and the top right here, this is what it would look like from the front. But as we bend around the circle, the center line kind of bends around as well. So, our center line is going to be around here somewhere. It's usually around the same place for Mickey. Like a three quarter view. Really getting some slowdown on this pen may hamper me a little bit because I'm not used to having slow down. Right, okay. So that's in about there. Now, what I've done on these Mickey ones, just to make it easier for yourselves, is if we break this down into quarters like so, then it just makes things a little bit easier for you to, to visualise whilst I'm talking. So let's do that. We'll pull that center line maybe in just slightly more like that. I'll just grab a soft eraser rub that out. So that's kind of like the centre line there for Mickey. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to sculpt this a little bit out more with the eraser because I was a bit of a maniac with that circle earlier. So yeah, so in the 80s, Mickey was in well, he was in the um, Christmas carol kind of thing. But he was also in Who Framed Roger Rabbit which was just a great film. Obviously the animating director was... Um, Richard Williams, who's still going strong now, he's like in his 80s or whatever, is, is um, a very knowledgeable dude. His book on um, animation is is almost flawless. Right, so there is the midway point. Now, for the muzzle, should we draw the body? We'll draw the body. We'll go wild. So this is going to be the scene where he's fl falling through the sky with Bob Hoskins and Bugs Bunny. Right, so the if we take the quarter measurements like this, then the muzzle generally on Mickey Mouse comes out to about quarter, a quarter of the width of the circle. So what we're going to do is we're going to add that in. And we're going to come from around the halfway point of, of this little quarter square right here. We're going to come out and round. And then it's going to flatten off a very tiny little bit like so. There we go. And where we're going to connect in like this for the smile is on this point right here, we'll add this bit, this line here, which this line here, it just signifies the muscles around the, like if you smile like that, the the muscle and the, and the fat all bunches up like that. That's just what that is on cartoon characters. So let's add that little muscle mark in. And then we're just going to find like a comfortable arc to let us come down, round, and tuck in. Like so. There we go. I'm just thickening that out, defining the forms a little bit. Sorry if you can hear the traffic today. I normally have my windows closed whilst I'm doing these videos, but it's... Uh, it's incredibly warm and, and stuffy. And I did a couple of videos earlier today and it's uh, pretty dehydrated. Right, so then we're going to add the, the bottom lip on there. So the bottom lip is essentially just a another arc. It's not overly thick. It's not overly thin as well. Just a nice round arc shape like that. So let's add on Mickey's nose. So we just want a big oval shape that's going to come probably around around here, around this kind of area, like so. So it's just a 
kind of big oval. But what we can maybe do is um, we'll maybe bring this muzzle in very slightly. Like so. Let me just grab a soft eraser. Just bring it very slightly in. Because um, it was just feeling a little bit too far out. And then let's add the oval back in. To me, that's feeling more like the 80s Mickey Mouse drawing style. So it's, it's basically it's just an oval. And then he has the shine on there. Of course, you've got to have the uh, got to have the highlight, got to have the shine to make it sparkle, sparkle and pop. Right, so we've got that on there. Right, so we've got a nice, nice arc. We've got a nice, lovely um, muzzle that comes to about this half way point in here. But one thing that we're going to add is, like with this, where things bunch up like that, when forms connect to each other, like when you're when your arm, like so, when your arm connects into your armpit, then you get this kind of mark here, which is the bunching up of the skin. That was the worst anatomical drawing of an arm ever. But that's what we're going to get around here, coming off here, like so. Just a nice mark, just to really give it form, like so. And Mickey doesn't always have that, but sometimes does. Right, so that's essentially Mickey's face done. I mean, obviously there's the the pattern shape and there's, there's his eyes and stuff. But um, what we're going to do is, should we do the body now? Or should we finish off the face? I do not know. Right, okay, let's, let's add the body in. So let's imagine that this came down and what would be about there, wouldn't it, if we we doubled the head, if we, if we had that kind of shape in there, like so. It would be around there somewhere. That's it. So that's about two heads high. Cartoon character, not always, but generally measured in how many heads high they are. Now this figure's not going to be stood up, this figure's going to be kind of, um, kind of got in this kind of view to it. It's going to be floating through the sky. So the reason why bugs and Mickey are on the screen at the same time, for exactly the same time, is because this film was made by Disney and uh, they wanted the Warner Brother licenses to be able to add them into the film. Now, Warner Brothers were really actual, um, they're really good spots with this. I'm just going to add in the eye here whilst I'm just talking. So if you just notice how much it comes into here and how much it comes into here. Then um, they were really good spots, actually. They uh, they allowed Disney to have pretty much pretty much free reign of their character roster, but the, their only stipulation was that Bugs got the same amount of screen time as Mickey Mouse, because obviously Bugs was Mr. Warner Brothers. I mean, you think of Warner Brothers cartoons, you think of Bugs Bunny. And Mickey Mouse, you thought of, is is obviously Disney's little mousy mascot. So they wanted that, and Disney said, okay, thank you. Uh, let's create this wild and crazy kind of mashup. I, I, I mean, there's, there's rumours, there's been rumours all along that there was going to be a sequel. Obviously, Bob Hoskins died a couple of years ago now. And... Um, but apparently, I think at one point J.J. Abrams had pitched like a, an idea for a sequel, and I think uh, Robert Zemeckis, who was the the guy who directed the original one, he said that he's still going to go forward even though Bob Hoskins died. So, messy sequel. How um, how willing all the different companies are to play a ball with the characters now? It is we shall see, but that'll be a very interesting thing to witness. I think. Be cool to be in their boardrooms actually probably quite boring and litigious going through the boardrooms but right so as you can see we've kind of got this now <laughs> i've never babbled as much as this i don't think so on mickey's head he has these goggles all right so we'll draw let's draw in the 
Might have to make Mickey slightly smaller here. Oops. Don't need him right in. Let's um, draw in the ears first. So as Mickey is falling through the sky, so that's about another head high somewhere in there. So as Mickey is falling through the sky, then um, obviously if you fall uh, extremities like ears and things like that, especially big floppy ones like Mickey's, are going to kind of go stretch out so Mickey's ears, instead of being these nice circles that they normally are, or sometimes ovals, then they're going to kind of stretch right out like so. Kind of come in, attach like at the midpoint of, of this this angle, like that. They're going to kind of come like that. Stretch out, around, and come into maybe like this part here, so not the centre, but across, oh, just just a tad, like so. So it's going to be really stretched out like that. And that just adds some nice dynamic um, look to the image. So obviously that's going to be black, but I will do a quick inking at the end like I always do, just to um, show you how it would look if you cleaned it up. I mean, I don't do a very good ink. It's, it's just a very quick inking just to kind of imply what it looked like. I don't spend anywhere near as much time on it as I should. Right, so we're adding this little design bit now. So it's always got this kind of thing going on. So obviously Mickey's he's got this bit pointing here that separates the eyes. It comes around and out and it's kind of... Uh, uh, what is it? His mouth kind of fits in there. So that's essentially what, what we're going to be doing now. We're going to be doing that design. So this line kind of comes and hugs the center line that we drew in at the beginning. Then it's going to rock it off this way. Like so. Just add a little bit of thickness in there. I've maybe come down slightly too low with that, but um, it's... I mean, it's fine. So this is going to come round like this. Kind of just just cut into this this little uh, quarter here very slightly. And then it's going to come down. And the place that we're going to aim for, if we were to split this square here into, let's say, thirds, then... Slightly more accurate. Then this would come and this into about halves it's going to hit just below that halfway line and just kind of on that third line so that's where we're going to aim so it's good to have a point in mind and then just create a nice arc to really get that feeling nice like so then we're just going to come off this way and tuck in if we've got this little pie segment here it's just going to be slightly behind slightly behind it. And we're just going to have a nice arc. Again, we're really looking at that point and linking it in like so. And then we're just following around the, the actual form of the ori original circle that we had. Like that. And then that's, that is Mickey's face. Obviously, we've got another ear to contend with. But that is Mickey's face from from the uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And it kind of made a little bit of like a comeback for Mickey, I guess. He had uh, a bit more things in the 90s. Obviously in the 2000s, he had the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse thing, the little kids thing. And um, so this second year is going to be less, less elongated and stretched out by gravity and slightly fatter. Not like hugely fat, but something like that. I mean, the majority of it's going to be obscure by the hand anyway. But it's nice to just know where your forms are, drawing through your forms to really know where they are. Right, so we've got that, and let's look. So the actual tail is going to be in there somewhere, but we'll do that right at the end. Right, so let's worry about the body and then we'll worry about the hands okay 
So we've got a nice, nice form to build off. Now, what's going to happen here is the body's going to form like a nice line of action like this. Now, line of action is basically just whatever your character's doing. Like, say, if you had a, let's say, a, a ballet dancer or something like that, and she's kind of got this kind of shape going on. I think they bend a bit more. Like this, this kind of thing. You, you've got actually they point the toes, don't they? So you've got this kind of thing with with like a, a ballet dancer arms going going behind like that. This that would be the line of action for it's. I mean, terrible line of action for a ballet dancer. And that's just what we're doing here. Mickey Mickey Mouse is is obviously he's got his head like this, and his line of action is kind of going to be curved like this because he's uh, obviously falling like so and the wind resistance is pushing up on him like that as he as he goes down he's falling down like this the wind resistance is pulling up here but this part here is is what he's leading with like so i hope that made sense to you but that was just me trying to describe the line of action in very few words i'll maybe do a line of action video one time if people would like that if they don't want that don't ask for it right so the actual length of this like let's let's take a look at mickey's like head size again so it's, it's going to come out to what around here mickey's mickey's head maybe very slightly in like that so all we're doing is kind of measuring the width of that and expanding it out it's going to be something like that. I mean, I've probably gone, like I say, oops, just a little bit too thick. It's about right there. And obviously we'd already measured this out. So we've got this nice square going on here. Right, so Mickey's body is going to finish. Like, let's pretend we had the circle there and we had this circle here for the head. We had a circle up here. Like so. It's got all these circles kind of going on. And his body's going to come down to maybe a th uh, two thirds through this circle. And it's going to lead up and kind of end around. It's, it's kind of short area is going to end kind of following the arc of that circle somewhat. So let's come out from about here. So midway in that chin area. And we're going to come down, around, hit that point which we already established, like so. Come up. There we go. We've got this this kind of thing going on. So it's following this this shape up into probably around here actually. So let's just make that a little bit of a nicer shape. There we go. Now, on this halfway point here, it's just going to come off slightly from there, like that. This this part's going to intersect, and he's actually wearing a like a backpack or something. Oh, he's wearing a parachute, obviously. He's flying through the air. So this part's going to stick out here just just a little bit, and we're going to. Um, come up to let's imagine that this circle's here around a third of here in the center that kind of thing kind of where his ear is so we've got that kind of shape now his shots are going to be based around this but a lot of this is going to be covered up so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my soft eraser go over that slightly so this shape's going to come round like this and then how we did when we created the muzzle and we added that little part on here, we're going to create one of those for the shorts as well. Just to signify that it's all... It really... Little things like that just add, add to the image, I think, quite a lot. So we've got this uh, circle part in here. Like this. And that's going to kind of work for his body shape. Yeah. Right, so he's got these let's do the legs first. Let's get them out of the way. So if we follow this body part around like this, 
that's going to give us the the line in which his his legs are based. Now it's it's not going to come up far. Like if this was a circle, it'd just cut slightly into this and then go around into that line, like so. Somewhat like that. Then we've got this big old shoe. So if we was to extend further again, we'd have what about there? Like so. Something. I mean, I'm just being like rough with this. I mean, it's not. We're not worrying too much to be on model where it's actually going to be in production. But to be honest, this would pretty much. Well, this would be good enough for uh, to be on model enough for production anyway. Right, so let's kind of add a big square in here. Like like so. So as you see it's cutting like a quarter into this maybe a third, a quarter kind of thing into this uh, this set imaginary circle. We're going across just past the halfway line. Like that's probably halfway up this circle. And we're going to like three quarters of the way across. And just under the join, like so. So we've got this box here for his for his foot to fit in. Now, Mickey's foot tapers and and does all sorts of kind of things like that. So let's just join this to the body, like so. Then Mickey's shoes. If we look at Mickey's shoes from like from a side, they're, they're a lot bigger than this, but like this and his foot kind of connects in here so they've got this kind of like a I'm not sure what this thing's called but I guess it's kind of like a lip where, it, where his, his shoes kind of go over now we're going to add that in there like so so let's wrap that around now soon we're going to be getting to the 2010s which some of my favourite Mickey stuff of all time is in there. The actual Mickey Mouse shorts. I don't know if you've you've watched them, but if you type Disney shorts into uh, YouTube, there is actually a channel called Dis Disney Shorts, which is run by Disney. And if you click on Mickey Mouse shorts, then there is like a ton now. There's like two or three seasons of the stuff now. And there is some like awesome 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 storylines that like <sighs> Disney have a, a propensity to be quite um, quite safe and, and especially with Mickey and quite vanilla but some of these shorts are doing some like crazy stuff and some are like my favourite storylines in animation that I've seen for a lot of years okay so we've got this kind of big slabbing thing for a, for a foot there. Mickey's always got huge feet. Uh, we've maybe gone slightly big, but it's it's fine. Like so. Then there's just these marks in here. Like this. Very simple design on the shoe. Just like that. Now if if you if you take the actual width of the shoe, it's I mean, probably the same width as his as his face. Like from here to here is probably the same as from here to here, and that's kind of typical of Mickey. Just trying to really carve this shape. My pen working. Here we go. Really carve this shape out to get something nice. Righty then. So we might as well add the little oval here. Like so. That's the kind of little mark on Mickey's... Uh, the buttons, I guess, on Mickey. Now, there is actually a section here which goes from Mickey's tummy, his kind of like chest area, into his pants. Now, on this, if we imagine here, like a circle going all the way around like so, it's going to be that kind of feeling to it. Then, obviously, Mickey's got his backpack on. So let's add the strap along here, like that. Now, that's what's gone wrong. Okay, I must have colour sampled and I've gone for a lighter colour. There we go. Maybe not as thick as that, but let's thicken that just slightly. 
Let me add that in. And this. There we go. That feels a lot more like it. Right. So we've got to contend with Mickey's hands. Now, Mickey's hands are my favorite part of Mickey usually because he's just got, he's got crazy. He's got crazy big hands and crazy big feet. So if we measure like the head out again, I've got this kind of shape like this. Like so, let's bring it up here. Like so, something like that. This is kind of our like uh, box area that we're going to be building on. Let's draw some circles. Now, normally I wouldn't actually draw all of these circles and things like that. I'd, I'd eyeball a lot of it and do a lot of it with different measuring things. But like I say, it just makes things a little easier to communicate. So we're going to just above halfway of this. And the actual width of the hand is going to... It's going to... Um, going to kind of come in like this. It's going to connect to a just past halfway point of the nose. It's going to come up round. I've gone a little bit too high there. I want to hit that line that we did as the actual uh, marker point. Now some awesome, awesome, awesome animators worked on, on this film. You should really go and check out the actual production like look who who worked on things because there's some fantastic animators that like i say worked on uh, even like james baxter was like known throughout the animation world as just one of the most competent animators he was doing like cleanup on this stuff like he, this was like his first gig and uh and then he he actually got some animation work through that actually made it into the into the film. So it wasn't just clean up. I think his uh, mentor was Andreas Deja. Again, if you are not familiar with Andreas Deja, you should be. He's a fantastic animator. He's got a, a blog, I think it's called like Deja Vu or something like that. And he gets he goes through the old Disney archives, all the archives at Disney, and he um takes like loads of like milk cows or he's a big milk cow fan it takes a lot of his work and puts it online for people to see which is is super cool of him he's got like a huge milk cow collection right so as you can see there i was just adding that circle and just connecting the hand in like that that kind of feels about right Maybe we've gone slight, slightly big with the with the length of the arm, but nothing noticeable. There we go. Then, like I say, we created this mitten shape, and then we've got like a thumb that's going to come off this mitten shape. So let's just add a little bit of form. Instead of just coming off like that for the thumb, let's really like bend it round and come and like kind of create this interesting shape. So... Let me get rid of all this stuff here because this is going to confuse you. I might not confuse you, but I don't want it to. So if we kind of add like a guideline first, then his thumb's going to come out to about here. And the thickness of it is probably going to be from here, and then it's going to connect in here like this. So it's quite a thick thumb. So you're going to come out like this and around... And then you're creating this shape that comes up, creates a little S shape like so, like an elongated S like this. That's what I'm drawing now. And that's coming like that. It's coming up, down, and around like that. Now what I'll do is tidy that up just a little bit. like so. So let's take a look. So we're going up, maybe not even that far, down, around, and then into that S shape. Like that. So we've got Mick, uh, Mickey's, 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 
Mickey's mitten. And the tallest finger is going to be the middle finger, like if you hold your finger out, your finger, uh, middle finger is probably going to be the tallest one. We're going to cut into that like so. So we're just using this mitten as a guide. So see if we've got this kind of thing. We're going to, just going to draw the fingers off like that, and the middle one's going to be bigger, like so. Just going to create that kind of thing. That's what our mind is thinking of. We create a shape, then we add the details that conform to that shape. It's what we always do when we're creating for animation and stuff. So this finger's going to be a little bit bigger. Kind of come round. It's going to come down to around the same, around the same point. Then we've got the the little finger, which is is smaller than smaller than this one. The height point goes like that, kind of thing. It's going to be slightly off like that. Come round and in. So you can see how we use that mitten shape just as a guide. Then on here we're going to put one in the center, a mark either side. like that and then you can see how we've constructed pretty nicely Mickey Mouse's hand like so. So we've got his hand, we've got a big old foot and we just need to create the other arm now, the other arm and hand and his goggles as well. Let's stick his goggles on now because I'll probably forget about those. So it's just going to be an oval like so just lying on the vertical, like on the horizontal, sorry. How is it called that vertical? I don't know why. Then another one next to it, like so. Now the one next to it that's in the background is going to be slightly smaller because it's further away from us. But what we will do is we'll cut into the little face mask pattern thing a little bit like so so we've got that one there and that one there then we just need an oval in this and it, we're kind of just drawing donuts here so if this is our oval we don't want it bang in the center like that because that's if we're looking down on it we want this up like that so you can see that there's more gap here uh, than there is here right so let's just Stick that in like that, and that in like that. Like I say, I'm really intrigued to see if a sequel does happen. What I'm more intrigued to see is if they do it 2D, like proper traditional 2D, like the original, like it should be, and what animators they manage to get on board to, to actually do that, or if they just kind of farm it out to... Uh, I think Korea does a lot of the animation uh, stuff at the moment. So it'd be interesting to see if they actually establish a, a proper studio and getting um, getting people like James ba Baxter and Andreas Deja and kind of see see what they can do nowadays. Obviously, James Baxter had his own uh, animation studio for a while. He does a lot of 3D stuff now, which it's just going to be interesting to see what happens if we ever do get another 2D film because all the great 2D stuff that we had well from the kind of 30s through to the end of the 90s kind of thing all of those animators were drawing constantly animating 2D on paper constantly day and night, day and night, day and night, day and night so the thing that worries me is these ones that have been now, obviously, they're still animating and still drawing, but they're not drawing day and night, day and night, day and night, uh, 2D and everything like that. So it'll be interesting to see how that affects and whether it does take a couple of movies to actually for people to get back in the swing of things. Although they're all brilliant, so I'm sure it won't be too much of an issue, but still. <sighs> right, this one's this one's taking a while. That was uh, that was me just coming to that realization. So if we've got this circle here, it's fun to do the full body Mickey's though. It, it really kind of shows you what goes into uh, a full full drawing. 
Right. So, like like you see, I've softened that up. So the hand area is gonna is gonna come around here into this circle, and then the palms, of the top fingers. Let me rub rub your donuts out. It's gonna come just outside of this circle. Now it's not gonna be super thick. It's gonna be slightly thinner than this one. It's gonna be about the same, maybe. It's gonna be like this kind of shape. And then it's gonna cut in to this ear and come around like that. So we've kind of got like a you know, like a kidney bean or something like that. We've got that kind of shape going on. Could be slightly bigger, could be slightly smaller. But that's a rough approximation of the shape. Now, it's not as thick as this one. This one could maybe do to be slightly thinner, so we can thin this up a little. Like so. Let me just rub that out so I don't forget to make that thinner when I'm doing the inking. Right, that looks a bit more elegant anyway, being, being that size rather than the size that it was. Um, right, so, yeah, with this kidney bean one. So, we've got this kind of shape here. Then, like before, in fact, what we can do is we're, we are going to come a little bit lower down with this. Like so. That feels a bit nicer. Let me just... That's, that's starting to feel a little better to me. Then what we can do is we can bring this thumb like this. And we'll maybe we'll cut into the, the band a little, the headband a little bit. Right, so let's just do what we did before. So we've got this finger. Actually, it's slightly reversed. The fact that the little finger before was the smallest. On this one, it's not actually going to be the smallest now. That's obviously just a design choice that was taken. So we're going to come in and around like so. Then we've got the, the big finger, which is going to come touch the boundaries. And then come out and in, in and out and in and around kind of thing. Like that. Then we've got that final one like so then that's going to come round and then that is going to actually tuck in around around here somewhere like so so we've got that shape comes in around then we've got this shape like that now these points probably don't come down quite as far as what I've drawn And then this one, which to me it feels like this one should be slight, like slightly bigger. It's closer to yours, and it, it is um, the bigger finger than than the little one. So what we'll do is we'll make that slightly bigger and that one slightly smaller, like that. There we go. So we've got that coming in and around, that one, like so. That feels, that's starting to feel okay. So with the thumb, we've got the mitten and we're going to actually like cut in here and here. So let's uh, come out, in, out and around, like so, up and in. In. And that's going to feel like you're not going to be connecting those lines, but that's going to want to feel like those lines would connect. So you've got that kind of shape like that. And like I said, these, these lines don't connect, but they want to feel as though they would. Then obviously we've got that part that he had on his shoes. He's got that on his hands. Like that. And then 
there's this kind of like bump here to signify uh, a little bit more anatomy. Now this thumb to me is feeling a little bit too thin. So I'm just going to thicken it out just a tad. That to me feels ten times better. Like that. Let's get rid of this area. There we go. That's feeling better. Okay, so have we done everything now? Now we just need to add in the actual... So the shorts here, they, they come down and tuck back in. Like so. Like that. We have got his tail to add, but we've also got to add in the... The... Uh, like parachute kind of things. Straps. So it's going to come round... It's going to be that kind of shape, so it's like uh, like that kind of thing. So we just added that guideline, but then we're just going to thicken it out. So we go like, like that. And I feel like this strap is maybe going to... Let's add a bit of interest to this strap. So we've got this part here, cut in there, like so, and then cut up there, like that. Now it's not exactly this, it kind of hugs the this side of the face a little bit more on the actual image. But I'm going to just change it slightly in, in mine. Right, so we're going to come here and arouse this connect, but we're going to cut into this slightly like that again to just add a little bit more visual interest so let me show you what I mean this line's coming around like that and this line's tucking in behind it because it well it is behind it there we go and then we just thicken that out slightly and we have apart from the tail We have, I think, I don't think I've missed anything. We have Mickey Mouse flying through the air. So let's add that tail in. Let's get rid of all that. Now his tail's going to be, I mean, pretty long, really. Probably even longer than, than the actual room we have on this image. Let's move that down a bit. So... Coming from this ear here, if we add a straight line at a slight diagonal, like this, then what we're going to do is we're just going to trace that line and just add a little bit of a curve to it. A little bit of like an S curve thing. Like so. And as you can see right now, I'm inking this drawing, super speed mode. So this is just... Uh, to shorten the video down a little bit, and I wouldn't normally just ink a sketch like this, but it's just so you can, just so you can really see how it comes together. Because there's obviously a lot of sketch marks here, and it's not entirely obvious. I don't think uh, it's obvious to me, but that's because I drew it. But it might not be obvious to to someone looking that just where all the lines need to be um, thickened, thickened up, and everything like that. So. Yeah, this has been Mickey in the 1980s. This has obviously been Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So hope for a set sequel. And let's hope that it's going to be awesome in animated 2D. And let's... Yeah, so, so that's it. Next week I will be doing Mickey Mouse in the 1990s. So you can check that out. That's obviously going to be quite fun. There's a, f a few things to pick from in the 90s. But he kind of went super generic, I, I think, in the 90s. He had that kind of... He's got like a big fatter face and... He's a bit chubby here, but he, he kind of becomes a bit quite generic. But we'll have a look at that next week. Right, so until next week. Oh, before that, tickle the old down belows down there. Click the like button, the subscribe button. Add a comment if, you, if there's anything you want me to cover. Let me know. And until next week, I shall see you later and just have an awesome, awesome, awesome time. Bye-bye.